The month of March, we had the most houses under contract in the history of our company. Our 27 agents got 102 houses under contract in the month of March. Welcome back to another episode of All or Nothing in Real Estate. I'm your host, Matt Smith, the founder of All or Nothing in Real Estate. This podcast is a movement to give back to this amazing industry that's given so much to me and my family. And today, um, I'm going to do things a little differently. There's just been a lot on my mind recently, a lot of things that have happened in our business and and also some teams that I'm coaching and some, some wins that we have gotten that I just wanted to unpack for you guys today and share the secrets that are not really secrets, but the tactics and the strategies and the the things that are working in today's marketplace. Um, so a little bit of framework. So where does this come from? Well, in the month of March, we had the most houses under contract in the history of our company. Our 27 agents got 102 houses under contract in the month of March. And the month of March in our market is typically slow. Um, and so I think there's some things there, some lessons I learned that I wanted to unpack with you guys that hopefully will impact your business, whether you're, um, just an individual agent, whether you're a team leader, whether you're a broker owner, or, um, maybe you're an agent on a team. Uh, I think there's a lot of lessons here that we can unpack and that you can learn from. So, um, let me just start with what was the message to my team? So this is the lead, I'm going to start with the leadership things. This is top of mind for me. And so what was the lesson that I shared with my team when we just had 102 houses under contract in the month of March? The best month we've ever had. The message I shared to my team is probably not what you think. What I shared with them is that, yes, great job, great work. You should be proud of yourselves. I'm proud of you. You should be proud of you. But in reality... A lot of people forget that you're most vulnerable when you're at the top. When you're winning at the highest level is when you're most susceptible to risk. When you're um, you're most likely to quit doing the things that got you to the top. And so I think a lot of people maybe mistake, well, I got to win today. I got to win this week. I got to win this month. I got to win this year. And so that means that I can put it on cruise control. But in reality, that's what people do to win temporarily. Um, and we want to be winners that win permanently. And so I think one of the lessons that I shared with them is that remember what got you there. See, a lot of people quit doing what works because it works. I'm going to say that again. A lot of people quit doing what works because it works. So let's say you had your best month ever in real estate. Have you really unpacked what you did the last 90 days to get you to your best month ever? Have you unpacked the activities, the process, the thing that you actually focused on that moved the needle to get that result? Most people don't. They will look at what happened yesterday to produce the result, but they don't look at the body of work over time. And I just want to invite you to take a look at that body of work because if you look at that body of work, there's a lot of activity. There's probably some strategy, some tactics, some consistency, dare I say discipline that you actually put in place that would help you get that momentum that you've created in your business. And I think a lot of people will get look at those short-term results and think it was a short-term process that created that outcome. And I want to invite you to fall in love with the process, not the outcome. The process is where people go to win. And that's where legacies are made, right? Like, I think if you are like most salespeople, like just most humans, we work really, really hard. We have big goals. We strive to accomplish big, great things. But what happens whenever you put in that work, you start getting that result, Sometimes we over-celebrate and sometimes we're like, man, I can take a deep breath now. I did it. I hit the milestone I was going for. And what I want to invite you to is to realize that the people, the greats before us, the people that are accomplishing amazing things at very high levels, they don't, they don't rest on their accomplishments. You see, like we've all heard this saying, success is not about the destination, it's about the journey. And so I want to invite you, what was that journey that got you to where you're at? Where, what was the processes? What were the activities? What were the consistency? What was the discipline? What was the mindset shift? What was, what was the activities that you did to get the results that you got? And I think if you look at that body of work over time on a consistent basis and you fall in love with that body of work, whether it's number of conversations you had, maybe it's number of open houses you hosted, maybe it's number of leads you generated, maybe it's number of presentations that you did, maybe it's number of listing appointments that you got, maybe it's number of cold calls you made, video texts you sent, the list could go on and on and on. 
But what I want to invite you is to remember, don't stop doing what works because it works. Just because you sold your, you had your best month ever, I want you to realize something. Your accomplishment is now your new standard. And if you live your life by that mantra, yes, you accomplished something amazing. And I'm proud of you. Great work. But what if you realize now you've proved to yourself you can accomplish that, what can you do next? What is next for you? And I think too many people get stuck and they think, wow, I accomplished this success. So now I'm quote unquote successful. But in reality, especially in this business, if you don't keep doing that work, you're going to ride that real estate roller coaster and you're going to fall down that mountain very quickly. So like I said at the beginning, you're most vulnerable when you're at the top. And I think it's because of the language that we speak to ourselves. We're vulnerable because we think we've got it all figured out. Man, look at me. You're puffed your chest out a little bit. Look at the work that I did. Look at the work that I put in. Look at the results that I got. Look at me, me, me. I want to invite you to look in the mirror and look at you, 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 and look at the work that you did, did, did. Go back and look the last 90 days and keep doing those activities. Because what happens is once you get to the top, you have the furthest to fall. And what's crazy is, and I've experienced this in my life, maybe you have in yours, once you start climbing that journey to success, that mountain to success, and you're continually trying to strive to be better and better and better, there's a lot of people that are waiting for you to fall. There's a lot of people that are, that are behind you on the mountain of success, of life, of whatever journey you're on, that are looking up to you, that are actually probably hoping to pass you, and they're still putting in the work. Well, you get to the top of the mountain and you start enjoying the scenery, they're going to pass you by. And what happens is when life passes you by, you see a lot of people think that they can just coast. Well, I made it to this pers- this mountaintop. I made it to this objective. I got this amount of income. I got this many houses sold. I did whatever it is you wanted to accomplish. Awesome. I'm glad you accomplished it. But the longer you sit there and you look at what you accomplished, the world, your competition, your goals, your dreams, everything is passing you by because you're just sitting there and you're being stagnant. Have you ever walked by a body of stagnant water before? Like, think about that for a minute. Why? What happens to stagnant water? It starts growing mold and all kinds of diseases and it stinks and it's just nothing good, right? Why do we become stagnant in our lives? Why don't we consistently grow, consistently move, consistently try to develop and become better? And if we live life through the lens of our accomplishment is now our new standard, we're going to always level up. We're going to always become better. We're going to always realize the activities, the actions, the skills, the mindset, the tactics that got us to that mountaintop, that got us to that success that we were striving for. And I mean, don't get me wrong. Enjoy the moment. Live in the moment. Be where your feet are. Enjoy the success that you got. But I want you to have more success. I want you to use that as a stair step to the next thing in your life, to the next thing that you want to accomplish. And so soak it in, soak it, but soak it in for the moment. Not for the month, not for the week, not for the year. Soak it in for the day. Soak it in for the hour. Soak it in for the amount of time that is realistic for the, what you accomplished, depending on what your goal was. And I think then you got to realize you got to get back to work. And if you just live life through the lens of you're always growing, you're always trying to become better, you will have so many more success stories in your future. And I can't wait to hear, wait to hear about them. But how many people do we know? This, I love this analogy. How many people do we know in our lives that were maybe, they peaked in high school? What are they doing now? They're talking about the good old days, of how good it used to be. They're sitting at the bar at two o'clock in the afternoon with their letterman jacket on. They're 45 years old now, 55 years old. And they're talking about how good of a quarterback they were when they were 17 and 18 years old and how good they used to be. Instead of realizing that they could have taken those skills, they could have taken that work ethic, they could have taken all of the trials and tribulations they went through to get to that success, and they could have done that through life. They could have continued to grow and develop. I'm going to invite you to not be that quarterback sitting at the bar. Don't be that guy, that 50-year-old sitting at the bar at 2 p.m. on a Wednesday wearing his high school letterman jacket talking about the good old days and how good he used to be. Don't Don't fall for that trap. Because, again, if you're able to accomplish something great in life, sure, soak it in. I'm proud of you. But what is next for you? What is the next step? It's so important that you realize that life is, a, life is a journey, right? Like there's growth. And if you decide that you don't want to grow in life, then in reality, this is harsh, but it's the truth. You're either growing or you're dying. You're getting better or you're getting worse. Which are you doing? 
And by not choosing to not grow, by choosing to not do something better, by choosing to not level up in your life, you're actually getting worse. The world is passing you by. Your competition is getting better. Your goals and dreams are further away. What I want you to realize is that I got this from um, Ed Milet, one of my mentors. Your goals and your dreams is not as, are not as far away as you think. They're way closer than you realize. But you have to put in the work compounded over time. You have to fall in love with the process. See, I think there's a big difference between people who win um, and people who are champions. And so let's talk about like sports analogies, for example. What about the teams that win a championship once? You go look at any sport. Go look at basketball, football, baseball. There's a lot of different teams that have won one championship. Now look at how many have won two in a row. It gets smaller. What about the ones that won three in a row? Those are the legacies that we all know. Even if you're not a sports fan, you know those teams. Because they built a franchise. They built a legacy of consistent and proven results time and time and time again. Those are the people that our grandkids' kids will know about. Because of the mark they left on the world. What if they would have just stopped after one? And they would just, man, this is great. Look at me. I'm a champion. Nobody's going to know who they are. And so I think a lot of people live, and this is, this is a, a different perspective I have on life, and I'll just share it with you. A lot of people live life for the resume. They live life so that other people will give them a pat on their back. So other people will view them as a success. And I just think that's a waste of energy. It's a waste of time. And I think that if you live life for you, you live life for those that you care about. And instead of living life for your resume, live life for your eulogy. What impact will you leave behind when you're no longer here? How many people will show up to your funeral? Me? I think about it a lot. Call it dark, cart, call it whatever you want. But I'm here to make an impact on this world. I'm here to change people's lives. I'm here to leave a legacy behind for my family. And I want people when they say my name to have nothing but good things to say about how I impacted their life. And I want my funeral to be a sold out sports game. I want to have to go to an arena where people have to buy tickets to get to be a part of it because they want to show their respect for the impact that I made on their lives. And if you live life through that lens, it's way easier to not get stuck and read your own press clippings about how good you are, what you did accomplish, because there's so much more possible in this world. So I just want to invite you, if you're winning right now, good. I'm proud of you. Remember what got you there. Don't stop doing what works because it works. You're the most vulnerable when you're at the top. When you're at the top, you also have the furthest to fall. So break down the activities, break down the process that helped you get to where you are, that helped you achieve that success that you've achieved. And use that as an accomplishment for your new standard. And that is now how you live your life. And you're going to continue to improve that day after day, week after week, year after year. All right, so I'm going to tie this into something else too. Um, this just got my brain going. And one of the things I think a lot of people mistake. So that's if you are winning. What if you're not winning? Matt, that's, all, that's great. That's inspirational, whatever. Um, but I'm not winning right now. Let me give you a secret on how to win. I guarantee you, this is better than a business plan that you probably don't have. First and foremost, a business plan does not need to be a calculus equation. You want to have a proven process to win, a guaranteed blueprint to help you win? Here it is. Throw your 100-page business plan out the window. Quit overcomplicating it. When, you, when you're an overwhelmed, you're overcomplicated, what happens? You freeze. You panic and you freeze and then no action happens. And so here is the super successful business plan that I guarantee you will work if you want to win. What is your minimum daily standard of activity required to produce the result that you're trying to produce? What is the process? What is the activity that is in your control? You see, a lot of people are looking at the market and they're saying, well, Matt, I can't win in this market. What about interest rates? What about inventory? What about the NAR ruling? Sure, play the victim card if you want. But there's people like me that are out there winning and winning at the highest levels possible. And I want that to be you too. So it's your choice. 
I was literally having a phone call with someone that wants to partner in real estate and they're having a tough time right now. They're talking about partnering with me in an EXP network. And here was the honest conversation that I had with them. If you're willing to do the work, I'm willing to help you. I'm throwing you a life raft, but you have to swim and grab it. If you don't want to do the work, awesome. Tell me now. But if you want to do the work, here's your life raft. Grab on and swim. Let's swim together. And I think a lot of people are just waiting for this market to get better. But in reality, the market's not the problem. You are. Are you getting better? Are you controlling what you can control? Are you winning the day each and every day? What is the minimum daily standard of activity you know you need to do that you are finding an excuse to not do because you're trying to be busy versus being productive? You're trying to find an excuse of why poor me, how come I'm not winning and everyone else is, and you're playing the victim card instead of looking at the man or the woman in the mirror saying, I'm the problem. I'm not doing what I need to do. But the good news is you're also the solution. The minimum daily standard of activity. It can be something as simple as I need to have five two-minute conversations with someone about real estate each and every day. Well, Matt, that sounds simple. It is, and it works. I'll be honest with you. We just had our go to the board. Our go to the board is our quarterly exercise where we uh, make public declarations. Our agents make public declarations of what their, what their commitments are. And each and every one of them come up and give their one thing, their minimum daily standard of activity. And the agents that are winning at high levels, we have agents that have 10, 12, 14 pendings on our team right now. We have agents that will sell well over 50 homes this year on our team in this market that you're saying is a bad market. You know what they're focused on? Five conversations per day. Compounded over time. Quit overcomplicating it. We're in a contact sport. Yes, you need skills. Yes, you need leads. Yes, you need coaching. Yes, you need training. But if you don't do the work, none of that stuff matters. You have to have that activities consistently in order to win. And if you listen to the first part of this and you're like, man, I really wish that I could get to that top of that mountain. This is the secret. This is it. What is that minimum daily standard of activity that you know you need to do? But you're avoiding the work. There's a secret that my uh, good friend, my coach, my mentor shares all the time. It has withstood the test of time. Work works. This doesn't come easy. It's not supposed to be easy. As a matter of fact, the more challenging it gets, the more exciting it is for me. Because that means not everyone's willing to do what it takes to get to the next level. We have an unfair advantage if we're willing to do the work. So if you're listening to this podcast, it's because you want to grow, because you want to be better. So here's some harsh truth for you. You are the problem. If you're not where you want to be right now in this business, in your life, you are the problem. But that's also the best news you'll hear all day, maybe even all year. Because if you're the problem, you're also the solution. What is your minimum daily standard of activity you need to do today so that you can win the day? You see, we all want to win the year, but you can't win the year if you don't win enough months. You can't win enough months if you don't win enough weeks. You can't win enough weeks if you don't win enough days. But instead, we want to find all of these magic lead sources. We want to call call Matt because he's a coach and he knows how to do this. We're going to ask him, what's the secret? The secret is hidden in the thing you're avoiding. The secret is in the daily work that you are doing. Now, if you're putting in the work and you're not getting the result, You give me 90 days consistent body of work, we can go back and watch that game film and we can improve and we can enhance. But until you do that body of work, I am handcuffed. I can't help you. Your team leader is handcuffed. They can't help you. Your broker owner is handcuffed. They can't help you. You have to have a body of work so you can go back and review where the gaps are so you know what you need to improve, what you need to adapt, what you need to change so that you can get better results. But it starts with the work. Guys, that's the end of my rant today. Appreciate you tuning in. Appreciate you guys as always. I hope you found this helpful. I hope this was the wake-up call that you need. Um, This actually was helpful for me too because sometimes I avoid the work too. So this wasn't just all about you. I hope this helps you become successful. I hope this gets you to the top of your mountain. But Once you get to the top of the mountain and realize that's just step one. You're most vulnerable when you're at the top. Thanks for listening, guys. Send this to a friend. 
Thank you for following this podcast, this movement. It is growing like crazy. We appreciate you. If there's anything I can do to help, don't hesitate to reach out, and we'll see you next time.